I can never hate you. It's you and me against the world. Humane is a Shutter exclusive directed by Caitlin Cronenberg. That's right, the daughter of Peter Cronenberg. Dear God, there are so many Cronenbergs, it's going to be a Cronenberg human centipede that one of the Cronenbergs would likely do. They would likely try to revamp the Human Centipede trilogy. Do you like the Human Centipede movies? Let me know in the comments. This has nothing to do with the Human Centipede movies, besides maybe being full of so much goddamn shit, they practically are the Human Centipede movies. All Human Centipede together, yeah. Humane is inhumane. Inhumane to horror, inhumane to filmmaking, and inhumane as far as, well, anything other than a halfway interesting concept. This was written by Michael Sparaga, and the biggest name actors in this particular cast, this particular fiasco, this production, Peter Gallagher, Why Don't You Call My Name, and Emily Hampshire. Other than that, you do have Jay Barshul, and then you also have Alana Bale, <coughs> and it focuses on the York family, not the Yorkshire family, since they already have Emily Hampshire in this. We can't have another Shire here. We're not the fucking Lord of the Rings. Basically, the York family, they are trying to deal with the immediate, you know, factor of one of them is going to have to die. And there's a reason for that. Because humanity is absolutely goddamn fucked. The world is fucked, and basically it's not even in the not-too-distant future, not next Sunday AD. The humanity population must be reduced by a percentage of 20. And because resources are <coughs> being depleted, and are like... You're all fucking too much and producing too much, so kill some people. That's about it. That's a halfway interesting concept. And then we see a little bit of setup. Uh, people basically gain a large payout it, should one of their family members decide to enlist. Even though there's some propaganda stuff like enlistment equals propaganda. I'm doing my part. It's like if Starship Troopers had a minute budget and also no intelligence behind it. But the idea is there. You know, enlist and you will guarantee citizenship. No, it's actually just, basically, we need to kill some people. That's about it right there. And then we focus on the York family, and it turns out this family isn't exactly as unified as we thought. <laughs> and, yeah, some of them have to go. That's about it. It's a one-location shoot, essentially, so you can keep production value, or production, you know, costs low, and you can center around these characters, which only helps if you actually have characters and not one-note bullshit like this movie. And that's essentially what this is. It is a collection of people with no redeeming goddamn qualities. And while the social commentary and the idea behind it is halfway interesting, the writing, the production, the directing is all seemingly done by people to sustain several major head injuries. That's before each scene happened to the point by the time any of the violence kicks in, you don't really care. I didn't care about 20 goddamn minutes, and even though it started out all right, it seemed like it was going to have some halfway decent dark humor, <clears throat> mixing in this whole, you know, possible real world situation we could all be facing in 30 to 50 goddamn years because y'all won't stop fucking. Stop having people. Let's reduce this population. Have your human spader neutered. Goodbye, everybody. No, I can't leave yet. I have to talk more about this movie. <clears throat> So we get news report clips and basically Athens, because Athens in, you know, is known to not only be tough on Greece, but it's also known to be tough on the world. You got one year to reduce your population's nations, and that's what they do. <clears throat> Here for a good time, not for a long time. That's the song that plays during the opening. And <clears throat> we see Jared, uh, that's uh, Jay, he's kind of... He almost kind of reminds me of the of Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro actually had intelligence. <clears throat> and he's talking about populations, you know, needing to reduce. And uh, it talks about his family life, and that comes up a little bit later in the movie. <clears throat> and then we <clears throat> get introduced to the various characters. Noah is like the weak link of the group. He's also <clears throat> kind of seen as the... Uh, the black sheep, shall we say, because of certain things that he has squandered in his life. And also, he is not blood-related. He was adopted. That's something that factors in a little bit later into the movie. <clears throat> and then, for the, I do have to say that Emily Hampshire does play a good rich bitch. Do have to say that. And there's at least some talent in front of the camera. And I'm sure Caitlin actually does have some of her dad's qualities. 
but none of them are on display here. The writing is putrid, and the acting in particular isn't really all that great. And the conclusion just actually made me laugh, but not laugh like, oh, oh that's hilarious. Like, laugh like, oh, that's, that's where we went, huh? Yeah. It doesn't really have a decent build outside of the premise and everything. <laughs> it really stumbles by the time the second act goes. And then not even through the second act, it just falls off a goddamn cliff. And this is one of the worst horror movies of the year, easily. I didn't get around to it <clears throat> until it dropped on Shutter, but apparently this was on Amazon for a few bucks for a while. I just never got around to it, and I'm kind of glad. Just watch it on a streaming service I already pay for, because really, this movie is not good. I can see why a lot of people are divided on this. I can see why people like it, but to me, <clears throat> this is low rent with a halfway decent concept and a decent cast. That's it. And a fancy schmancy name. And she's going to have to live off that name because if this is the best she can do, she's going to have to find something else to do pretty soon. Spoilers! How's that for a quick transition? <laughs> so, basically, Ash or Ashley and Noah kind of have a camaraderie. Noah was adopted and ended up, you know, becoming addicted to drugs. He had a car accident <clears throat> where he killed, or an accident of some uh, description where he killed a woman and that's revealed a little bit later but he's been clean he met a girl named grace in his um in his recovery meetings but he doesn't want to tell his family he decides to show up as a surprise because peter gallagher and his wife dawn have decided to show unity by saying we're gonna enlist because we're gonna give you guys the inheritance and the estate and all that stuff you can divide up but that way we can take care of this on our own. Oh no, you don't have to do that, um, Jared says, because it only has to be one person per family. <laughs> well, yeah, um, Peter Gallagher's Charles says, no, that's that we really need to do. I've been a war correspondent. I've seen this shit. I need to get rid of. I need to do something to kind of and trying to kind of take care of like you know expand expunge my demons, shall we say? Exercise. That's what I was trying to say. So, we have this guy, Bob, that shows up. That's uh, Enrico, uh, I'm just going to say Enrico Palazzo because it's funnier. And if you get that reference, I love you guys. He shows up, <clears throat> but this is right after Dawn basically vanishes, just runs away. She can't participate in this. She doesn't want to die. Even though, as far as a character, it seems like she was already close to death. She was probably lobotomized. As a character, not as an actress. So Bob says, okay, well... <clears throat> We took care of Charles, I respect him, but we need another body. So you got you few that uh, must decide among you. You have <coughs> Rachel, you have Noah, you have Ashley, and you have Jared. Who among you will be the next to die to replace the body of your mother? Oh yes, and there's also a little girl named Mia that is taken into the um, RV type truck that this uh, group has. And then from there, <coughs> they debate about who's going to kill who. And in a, they have two hours, by the way, to do this. And these two hours apparently are stretched out to about eight because it goes from at least midday to possibly late, you know, maybe late afternoon, like 5 or 6 p.m. And by the time all this is going on, it is well and truly past midnight. So the two-hour thing was probably a lie. Who knows how much of this government program is actually a, a truth? Who knows how much of this is actually just propaganda bullshit? Doesn't really matter. Um, yes, they take Mia into the truck, and then Mia's kind of a little, um, bitch, as the kids would say, I guess. Um, she's a little bit of a brat. The character, I, I think the girl tries, by the way, the one playing Mia. <coughs> but Bob, <clears throat> basically, he says, who among you will die? One of you has to pick. This kind of reminds me of the family from your next, um... <clears throat> where there really weren't any redeeming people in that either. In fact, I probably need to rewatch that to see if any mild comparisons are accurate. And the phones are scrambled, the internet's scrambled, so they can't find a way to get out there. So Noah, <clears throat> yeah, we find out about Noah. Mia knocks Bob a lot. We find out that Rachel, Emily Hampshire's character, isn't exactly the best person either. <clears throat> All these facts um, are told about the various people, there are these printouts, you know, of all the flaws that they have and all the good qualities they have. Ashley's trying to make it as a, as an actress. 
Noah is a concert pianist. Stop laughing. I run a clean show. <clears throat> and then Bob comes in because he sees him flicking the light on and off. And he says, oh, you can't decide. Well, I have this foolproof way, and it's drawing straws. So, <clears throat> basically, about halfway through, everything just flips. Rachel decides, Noah's squandered everything. He's done all this. He's brought shame to the family after we brought him in. Let's kill him. So, yeah, his accident, by the way, was paid off by the or by um, Peter Gallagher's character. So, oh, he doesn't need his cut of the goddamn thing. <laughs> Noah didn't know that was the case. He didn't ask for that. And Don then ends, ends up being captured while Mia's in the bathroom. So, Don, by all rights and accounts, Don wants to do the thing at home. Bob says, I don't care. I'm deep into this. So, let's just take her to headquarters and then let's watch this happen. Mia comes out of the bathroom. <clears throat> we get more bullshit. Noah um, ends up getting stabbed a couple times, I think. But then he decides, even though he's on a cane, because he's hurt from the accident, and probably from being a monumentally stupid character, he decides to get some weapons together. <clears throat> Ash tries to make uh, peace with him. That doesn't end up working all that well, because he ends up kind of stabbing Rachel, but he doesn't end up killing her. And, yeah, it just proves that the family is willing to do mild things to each other. They're willing to somewhat do whatever to survive. So more than two hours have passed by this point. I think several years have passed by. It felt like several years before this fiasco ended. <clears throat> and then Noah just decides to fight back and get all stabby. Ash gets stabbed. Everyone gets stabbed. <clears throat> and Noah's not doing all that well either. And everybody's saying, I'll do it. No, I'll do it. And Rachel volunteered first. And then Mia's like yelling at Bob, let me say goodbye. This editing is terrible. <sighs> so Ash plays dead. They capture Bob and various others. And they somehow overpower this crew with a bunch of guns. And they're going to euthanize Bob. But then apparently Bob makes some kind of deal with them because... Grace ended up showing up a little bit earlier in the movie, and she ended up getting shot when trying to run away. And then Ashley ended up also, you know, she, she ended up actually dying because she wasn't doing all that well. So they used them as propaganda, but everything else is fine. Or maybe they never actually died, and they're just using them as propaganda. Quite frankly, I just didn't care. I mean, obviously, we saw who died, who didn't, but this movie was terrible. Absolutely terrible. And Bob apparently is still alive. He was just put to sleep. This movie put me to sleep. What a fucking embarrassment this was. Absolutely terrible. Just terrible. Waste of a halfway decent premise. F. Gets an F. Possibly one of the worst horror movies of the year. We'll see by the end of the year, because we are not even out of July yet. So agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.